All right, we are now seeing Salad kind of looking through the different uh, levels that uh, they can choose. And uh, that is the level selection screen. If you haven't seen that before, it's kind of cool. Those are like the chapters or sectors. And each sector has a number of levels that uh, you can play. I love the yeah. kind of like glitch effect going on there. It's quite cool. Yeah, I was just thinking actually the the street lights look like smiley faces almost. Um, <laughs> but what I was going to say is each sector has 10, 10 individual levels. So like Catherine said earlier, 100 levels. And they, one thing that I think is really good about this as well is that all of the levels have been hand built by level designers who love platforming and such. And they've built these levels themselves to have this sort of speedrun mindset to them. It's not sort of procedurally generated, it's not just randomized, it's, it's every single piece is considered and thought about and how it was placed into the level, which just makes these 100 levels even more valuable to me. Indeed, it makes a huge, huge difference. Um, and uh, I don't know, there's there's kind of a... Um, I don't know, in the gamer world, there's a bit of a maybe disagreement. Some people really love randomized levels and some people really love hand-built levels. And I think it just depends on the game and maybe the skill of the level designer and also kind of what you're doing with things. Because if they were randomized, we'd have to have a seed to go on for each of the players to actually play a randomized thing. Um, but when we have something that are like hand-built levels, people from everywhere can can play these levels you know you're watching the stream right now or watching the video afterward and maybe you want to play these levels exactly as they are so it kind of gives a little bit of continuity and player experience to be able to like hey i beat this level a little bit faster than that competitor did um so it's really nice uh, especially with really quality levels like we see here in eon drive yeah, absolutely. And there's like, the option to mix it up further, like we were saying earlier. You can add collectibles to these levels and recontextualize them for the runners, have them do something differently. Um, as you can see now, um, Samurai is just loading up, and what you've got here for him is that which player joins the game, and then you can pick your colors, which seems like a very minor and pointless thing, but for me, I like everything in green and purple. So for me to have the opportunity to have my runner be green and or purple, is, is fantastic and it, it's such a minor thing that really makes the game more personal to me as a player. I think it's just a great little touch that you didn't need to put in and yet the guys over at Too Awesome, they did. I, I, I think the thing is great. Right. And of course, the pixel art for the characters is just top notch, really, really attractive looking. Um, and as you can see, yeah, Salad now choosing their character. Oh, and yep, we have Samurai Man also choosing purple. So... Best, Catherine. <laughs> the best, yes. What What if you had a choice between green and purple, Avalon? Which one Ooh. would you choose? I mean, in this game, in Aeon Drive, I do have that choice, and I did pick green. And <gasps> I can green. safely say green is faster than purple. Uh -huh. That's just the oh, rules of physics. Oh, right. Okay. I see. It's actually the exact opposite of the rules of physics, but I'm sticking with it. <laughs> well... Oh, oh, we have some more thingies happening here on Samurai Man's screen. Added an extra player there. Yeah, I, I, I haven't been able, unfortunately, to test it with multiple players. I don't know how it actually plays with multiple people um, mm -hmm. in one game. Um, I actually only got um, access to the game for this tournament. Um, so I picked it up on Friday, I want to say. Um, so, you know, I haven't had time to have a real good go through of this game. Right. So it would be interesting to see. Will we be able to get tag team races in the future, or will there just be what even looks like as a two-player game? It just, I'm really excited to see where this game goes, to be honest. I appreciate the development's finished for the time being. Um, they're just ready to release it and, and have people enjoy what they've created, but I, I really want to see what they do with it next. Right, me too. Uh, it's And it looks very flexible the way they've done things. It's obviously very optimized for speedrunning, and uh, I just can't wait to see what's coming next and what's, uh, you know, how people are going to react to the game, how many people pick it up, and and what kind of tournaments we're also going to see in the future because this is looking like a really really cool game, and uh, yeah, lots of possibilities, lots of opportunities for the future. Let's see, Samurai Man is navigating to sector. What is that? Nine? I think it's sector nine. Is that where yeah. we're going? Level? Get those drive uh. cores. 
Okay. I'm not sure why Salad is starting, if that's the level they're starting on or not. Um, I, I'm just not sure as of yet, but it would be great to see. So just to clarify the rules for this one, um, because this is now a top 4 32 match where uh, they both stood through on, uh, on the basis that their opponents didn't show up. They've got 30 minutes to go through this level as many times as they choose, um, and they need to get the best time on this level. Um, Samurai Man now just showing the uh, the tutorial where you'll learn how to jump, wall jump and similar. Um, but yeah, so 30, 30 minutes to go through this level as quick as possible, get that time down as low as possible. You've got enough time to pick a route. Um, you know, Samurai showing here, uh, sorry, Salad showing here that you can go along the bottom. Um, so you've got a little bit of time there, but then you've also got extra time there, more than the normal 10 minutes where you can really optimize that route and really perfect it to the frames. And uh, the timer has started, so this is now officially where our runners begin their race. And it is level 1-9, as we see in the center of the screen there. Um, and both players, I think, are just, yeah, they're starting their practice and they're going to find their roots. And it's going to be really exciting to see them both here together uh, and see which ways they explore to go. And that's a really kind of a tricky spot there where that saw comes up and you kind of have to wait for it. That's not going to be attractive to our runners, I think. Yeah, and, not uh, at all. Anything where you have to wait is suddenly a very bad thing. Yeah, let's see if they can find a different route above that, maybe. Let's see. Salad opting to go low again here. Yeah, well, um, Samurai accidentally uh, hit a next level instead of retry, which is going to cost him a few seconds, which, you know, when we're talking about frame-perfect optimization, that extra run could make a big difference to you, so he's probably going to be quite cross himself for that. Indeed. Samurai Man are hitting that saw. Not a good plan there. Let's see. Salad working it out, seeing... Trying, trying the jumps <laughs> and getting over. Yeah, managed to get over it in the end. I know for a fact when I took this level, there's a little ledge to the... Uh, behind you that you can uh, stand on and throw your, your knife across. But he actually made it all the way to the far wall, which is quite a big warp and quite a nice little time save. If... if he can optimize it where he doesn't have to keep trying it over and over. Right, we are seeing also some other optimizations. I'm noticing where they are sliding in certain areas. I think it might be slightly fa- Oh, wow! Salad sliding, but not quite fast enough where those saws just really nipped at his heels. Yeah, I don't rough. think- don't think losing your legs is much faster than, than not losing <laughs> legs in that sliding situation. But I mean, it, it's so- point. <laughs> It's so tough when you're- when you're working with Brain perfect inputs that you know if you do slightly miss a line like there, Salah jumped a little bit too late or threw his knife a little bit too late. Um, when it's that frame perfect, it's so easy to die, and these people dying is not any sort of indication of their skill. It's an indication of how quickly they're trying to get through these levels. Right, because they are trying to go for the most optimized route possible, and as we've seen in other speedruns and other games, you know, you just want to do the fastest thing possible, even if it's risky, because the risk is where you get the time savings. And so, yes, they're dying, but it's dying for a good cause. They, uh, they're just trying to optimize as much as possible. Absolutely, and we're seeing it there where Samurai originally with a 22 second time has brought it down to a 15.58 time. Um, so, you know, taking the first place at this point in the in the run, um, but by a whole second. So it just shows you really, you know, how much of a difference uh, a good run can make. As, again, Salad there just coming in with uh, just over 17 seconds. So even though previously he has done it faster that time, the risk didn't pay off. Those risks that you were talking about, Catherine, when they do pay off, they're really great. But if they don't, you've not gained time. You've wasted a run or you've learnt something, but you haven't put a new time on the board. Indeed. And it's interesting to see what they are kind of trying new stuff with. I saw a few new things from Salad in the last run. Even though it was a bit slower, it did seem like there were some more time-saving things like this crazy uh, warp dagger through that area where he's going diagonal uh, instead of straight and that is might help him with the timings there um, yeah we'll just have to see how it plays out you see at the bottom there he dropped down and he just held for a second um, which you know it didn't look like he'd lost a lot of time there but actually what happened was he missed this jump which therefore meant he missed this next bit and couldn't get through um, with that lava bar coming up and down 
Um, so it really does show you that one pixel wrong early in the level could mess timings up later on in the level. So even if you think you've got the route perfect and the timing down and all of that, there's still an opportunity there for the level to come and say, no, 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 you've gone too fast and things aren't lined up for you. Right, and that's, I think, one of the really tricky things about this particular game is that you have these timings that you really have to work with. Uh, other games are a little bit more static in how they have their obstacles to overcome, but this one definitely requires a lot of timing. And it's kind of interesting because if they find an optimization in a different area, that could mess up the timings in later parts if they're too fast. So it's going to be really kind of cool and, and interesting to see what they end up doing with stuff. Yeah, I, Salad there has just put on a wicked time. 13.23 for that, that run there from Salad. That was insanely fast. Wow. Um, and there were still mistakes in it. There's still room to, to optimize mm -hmm. that. And, you know, there were still points where he lagged on corners and, and just didn't make jumps correctly and stuff. So... You know, there's still a good couple of seconds here to make on this level, even though they are both exploring the same route. They've still got 20 odd minutes to to actually iron these little things out, which could be could be quite fun as we get on. But then equally, Samurai might go, do you know what? 1346 is the best I'm going to get as he also lowers his time. Um, he might go, that's the best I'm going to get on that route and go and look for something completely different and then find a whole new route. And it could be could be all sorts of different times. Indeed. Um, it's uh, this is getting really close. They both now have very, very close times, fractions of a second separating them, literally. So I want to see who gets who gets the best optimizations and who does the best run, because even with good optimizations, you still have to perform perfectly. So that's one of the critical things about these kinds of things, speedrunning in general, is that it's super, super tight. Uh, but I think that's probably why people love doing the speedrunning because there is this like performance precision that you work toward and uh, I know uh, when I was a craftsman that's that was the thing for me I loved doing things perfectly because it just feels good and uh, when you get it right and you can perform every move correctly and it gets you a high score time no better feeling than that it's great most definitely and uh I'm just getting it confirmed super quickly, but it did look like Salad there got one that was sub-13, but that one was sub-12, so he even cares about the sub-13. 11 <laughs> seconds, 0. 0.7, and 11.96 on Samurai Man's side, so they are getting wow. these frames optimized, they are getting these runs improved, and you know, like I said earlier, when they're at 15 seconds, there's still a couple of seconds to find, and they've gone and found them with an extra 4 seconds on both of them. I would love to see if they get a sub 11 on this that'll be really interesting to see because that i think will be the difference that comes through with salad there at 11.07 there's like a frame in it for him there to get 11 dead so two frames he needs to improve by to get down to uh, uh sub 11. yeah that was a huge huge improvement and they both made it at the same time which was really interesting um it's, it's, yeah, this is just like mesmerizing to watch these two competitors play. Really, really fun to just see what they're doing and, and if they can get that time even lower. Yeah, and, and before these times started getting lower and lower, I was gonna, um, you know, talk about the point you made about uh, optimizations and, and such your level. And what I was gonna say is, you know, you can optimize something to perfection, but then you have to get all of those optimizations in one run. And whilst I was thinking about saying that, both of them just throw up these amazing times. <laughs> uh, to, you know, they still got 20 minutes left as well. Don't forget that, they've got 20 minutes to go and find these optimizations and get these frame-perfect runs in. We could, we could definitely see a sub-11 here. Oh, absolutely. And the, I think the, um, hmm, the most, uh, shall we say, encouraging thing is that they can see the leaderboard at the very end of their run and they can see if they're on top or if their competitor has beat them. And they'll be like, oh my god, how do I get that better time? And keep on working for it until they have it so they can move on to the next round. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, like I said earlier on, um, when we were looking at Salad, just showcase the game for us. Um, I did mention that that little bit of uh, input there is really, really teasing. You know, it, it's got to be really tough for Samurai to see that there's less than a second between them. 
and he's looking at that going, oh, I can beat that. There's only a second there. And I've just seen, actually, the leaderboards do so show that um, Salah did get that sub-11. He's actually at 10.88 uh, now. Um, wow. I didn't see him actually make the run, unfortunately. I missed that. Um, it was only because Samurai, you know, I was just thinking how hard it would be to look at that fact. And now he knows that there's a whole second that he can find somewhere in this level, which is going to make it even more uh, challenging for him to go through. Indeed. It's interesting uh, to see. I wonder what's in their minds. You know, what are they thinking at this moment? What are they planning? What are they, you know, is there some rage going on? Or is there some just competitive thrill? Or um, it's kind of, uh, yeah, I wish we could kind of hear what they're, what they're thinking and what their thoughts are at this moment. Because, uh, yeah, they've used 10 minutes of their 30. Uh, and now they have 20 left to keep on finding optimizations for this particular level. And it'll be interesting if we can see many more time gains on this or not. Yeah, it's, it's interesting to see, you know, Samara, uh, Salad sorry, putting on a 10 second time. And then in that run there, he was pushing 14, 15 seconds before he reset. It, it's interesting to see how different things can go. Yeah, indeed. And this is what I love to see here in chat. You know, the game is coming out on the 30th. That's Thursday. Get it wishlist on Steam. It'll be on, like, every console anyway. Um, but when it does come out, these leaderboards are public. I know for a fact because I'm on them. So I want to see your times on these leaderboards. I want to see... Um, for Chikura foot. I want to see this sub-8 on this leaderboard within a week of this game coming out. Oh, it's going to be great and and so much fun for uh, for everybody watching here to pick up this game and, and kind of get going on it. Anybody who loves platforming, it really does feel like a very good platform of the movement feels very smooth and fun to play. So uh, I am also curious to see who can get the top of those leaderboards. Is it going to be these professional speedrunners or uh, our, um, uh, what, what would you call it? Uh, potential professional speedrunner is going to take those crowns um, because I think a lot of people are going to be competing for that because it is such a fun game to play. Yeah, and you know, this is how new speedrunners are born, is there's a new game that is designed specifically for them to show off their skill and then they just latch onto it, you know, and then they get that opportunity to say, look how great I am, look how brilliant my skill is. And this game could be perfect for someone to express that. I know when I picked it up, um, just looking at Sector 1, Level 1, it's in my head for some reason, um, I was pushing sort of like uh, 10 seconds on that. And then the leaderboard came up, and I was really proud of that. And some other guy has gone and put on uh, six and a half uh, second timer <laughs> on there. And I was just, I was so shocked that there's a, there's a Discord as well, guys, um, where you can get more information as well. Um, and he was on there, and I said, how on earth have you done that? And he showed me uh, his, his video recording of one of the runs he did, and he's just, the input speed is just insane. Um, oh, that is a cool story. Yeah, it was it was so cool. It's great that the community's there to help us. And just to, to clarify for chat, you can play it with a gamepad, you can play it with your keyboard. Um, it will be on consoles, so you can probably hook up your console controllers. I know for a fact I use my uh, PlayStation controller for stuff like this. Um, but I've got a friend who uses a Switch Pro controller, so whatever works for you. Um, I don't know if Switch Pro controller will work, but I'm assuming it will, and there's plenty of software out there to convert it anyway, so I'm not that worried about that. Yeah, it's very accessible to everybody to play, and um, yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun when it comes out, that's for sure. So put it on your wish list, mark your calendar, put it on your phone to give you an alarm when the game is available because it's going to be really, really great. And it does have a lot of content. A hundred levels is a lot of content uh, for um, a lot of these kinds of games. Uh, so there's plenty to play, that's for sure. Yeah, most certainly, especially when there's so many different routes. Like, these guys are running the same route as each other at the moment, and that's because it's the most optimal route discovered at this time. But when everyone's got their hand on this game, when people have got time to to play this game without the pressure of a tournament, then, you know, we could see people just experimenting new times, new routes, new new everything. And then the next tournament we look at, this time that we've got here, you know, we're talking about will we be get, able to get a sub-10 in this run? We might be saying, can we get a sub-7? 
You know, it might be faster than that. We just don't know where this is going to go as it develops. And once the general public get their hand on this game, we could see some insane times come through. Indeed, and I'm looking, I'm really looking forward to that. Uh, because somebody might choose a completely different route. It does look like both of our competitors have kind of go, gone on the same route and are just at the optimization stage rather in the experimental stage at this point. Uh, but later in later land, somebody could just find something completely new and blow it out of the water. Yeah, exactly. I mean, like this first section here, What? why are they going down and not up? You know, what, what's stopping them? I appreciate it's because they've got things they can throw their knife to. I get the logic behind it, but, you know, it's just questions like that that we could ask about the whole map, the whole right. setup of this game, and what can we do differently if you've got time to actually sit down and work it out. And that's what I was hoping to see more of in these 30-minute rounds, where people have that that extra time to, to find a different route, maybe, that is just significantly faster for no visible or obvious reason and then right. optimize that further. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I wonder if people, um, and you might know this, the answer to this question, is do people use a video to decide how fast, like the first section, would they video that and then compare the times to get across to the next area, or do they just compare their total time at the end? Now, I, I know for a fact that I have spoken to speedrunners in the past that have um, frame saved and then re-recorded something over and over and over again and watched the footage back. However, I think with games like this you kind of get a good feel for it. The inputs are so precise and the levels feel so natural once you get the hang of it. But I think you kind of just know if something's fast or slow, like there, Salad, mm -hmm. he hit a wall and his character, instead of falling, his character gripped it for a second, which is slow. Uh, and you'd yeah. know that straight away, but you'd see how to optimize it. So. Maybe for the minor tweaks that you can make, um, you might need to go back and watch footage, but I think the general game feel of this covers it quite nicely. Well, that's good. Uh, that that kind of eliminates the need to have a video kind of recording thing, and especially in this kind of a format where uh, they're not able to, or probably wouldn't be able to easily or quickly. Um, Doing things like that, watching stuff back, would be taking their time uh, that they could be using to practice the level. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I say 30 minutes as if it's a long time, but it is not a long time. Um, you know, it's really it's good for optimizing a section, and when you're dealing with a small gameplay loop like this, it'll work. But we're not talking about the thousands of hours that some speedrunners put in just to save a little bit of time on their runs. The speedrunning community is without trying to sound rude, they're obsessive. And it's one of their best qualities because they really do obsess to each and every frame. Yeah, it does take a lot of dedication to be a professional speedrunner or get yourself on global leaderboards um, because it is very competitive and a lot of people um, do work hard at stuff and it feels like the people who work the hardest who spend the most hours and learn the most that because that also is very important these kinds of games have communities discords websites where people post uh new routes they share things with each other in hopes to get the best time and that's one of the I think it's kind of one of the best things about the speedrunning communities that we've seen um, is that sharing of knowledge uh, so that people can get better at what they're doing and um, and they, most people, I, I think most people don't keep it secret because it's kind of hard to do so. Most people video what they do so uh, sharing is definitely the thing to to look for and uh, and hopefully get better at the game in general especially if you're a beginner Watching these kinds of routes will help you in uh, in learning and maybe even developing your own routes in the future. Yeah, most certainly. And, you know, chat as well, getting involved in this. They're seeing things and they're wondering, why are the runners not doing this? Why are the runners not doing that? And I, I just when everyone's got their hands on this game and we can start actually testing this sort of stuff, where you've got the safe to do it, it it's going to be interesting. You know, and it's going to be where people start doing the maths, and I, I talked, um, or I didn't talk to, sorry, I saw in chat earlier that they may be bringing um, ghosts into this, uh, into mm. this game, uh, where you can see obviously what you ran previously, or maybe even share your ghost uh, like you can on like Mario Kart, for example. Um, and that could be really interesting, because that would make it really good to see, you know, you're doing the right route, like the ninjas we were talking about earlier, you're doing the right route, you can just optimise it. But it might also show that 
you know, one section of the level you did faster, and then the second section you did slower, and you know that if you combine those two perfect runs, suddenly you've got yourself a faster time. And like I said, this game, although it is coming out uh, on Thursday, there's still so much more that can be added to it, and so much more uh, competition that can be found in it, and, and it's just so much to do, and I'm really excited. I'm so excited. I'm sorry I'm just gushing about this game, but I'm Are so you excited? excited for it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, and just seeing in chat um, that teleporting isn't always faster because of the animations that are attached to it. And I hadn't actually thought about that, but that's definitely a thing that you have to consider when speedrunning because certain actions do have animations that need to complete before you can complete the action, and it might actually slow you down. Yeah, I mean, I might end up getting my arm broken for mentioning another game uh, during this event, but... There's a game called Kaze and the Wild Masks where you can spin um, and the initial frame of the spin will speed you up but the following frame will then slow you down. So if you're going to spin and then jump, it can work out faster but you can lose momentum if you do it at the wrong time. So things like that will get worked out as this game gets more popular and people will start finding things like where is the optimum time to use the, the teleport and where is the optimum time to not use the teleport. Um, and now we can see Samurai has, he's kept trying and he can't seem to break this 11 second and a half point running the route that he's doing. So now, as I've said that, he's gone back to the old route, but he was trying a different route a moment ago. He's, he's gone back to this one now, but he was, I tell you now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's got to be frustrating for Samurai Man because he doesn't know where to save that one second. Uh, and I've been watching a Salad uh, a lot on the left there, and Salad seems to be really experimenting with uh, different movements, uh, like we talked about the teleporting, not teleporting, um, and trying to work out which of those actions is the fastest. And I don't know if uh, Salad is doing it. Looks like they are doing the uh, the slide a little bit, and some of those um, movements are feels like it's gaining speed. But he hasn't gone past the uh, his uh, his best time of 10.88 seconds yet. They've been kind of stuck on their own seconds uh, for quite some time now. Yeah, it's interesting watching them come out of the gate actually, because if you watch carefully. Samurai Man's launch from the beginning is significantly faster. There was a point where they both started level at the same time. But he's so much faster getting it out, but then he keeps losing a couple of frames after that first mm. teleport where he stands still for a second. So maybe there's some input control there that he needs to work on, but you can definitely see that at the beginning at least he is faster. It's something about the optimization towards the latter end of the level. Right. It's, um, that's, that's one of the interesting parts of this, I guess, is just to watch how they are putting things together, where they're gaining time, where they're losing time, and how it's, uh, how it's functioning for both of them. Wow, and Salad not even bothering to get to the end, knows the end bit, just starting over right there. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, you saw it there, Samurai has just knocked his time down a little bit, but one key thing that they're doing differently is on this point with the, the saws that go up and down, um, uh, Salad is throwing his knife into the middle of those swords, but this start point, Samurai is throwing the diagonal knife. So they're both doing one thing slightly different, and that's what's making the time differences there. So here, th where Samurai is now, Salad is throwing a knife for it. Um, and I think that if Samurai combined that and perfected that in these last five minutes, along with how quick he is out of the gate, I think we could see a change in the leadership positions. Indeed, it does look like he's whittling his time down somewhat. He's now at 11.26 seconds as his best. Uh, still a bit away from Salad, but gaining. Gaining very slowly. <laughs> yeah, that must have been a big load off his chest when he actually got that. Um, you know, he spent so long where he's about a second or so behind Salad. And then now he is uh, now just half a second behind it. He's seen that he can knock that time down and now he's got to do a little bit more. Now we're watching great Samurai movie. Man in full screen here and uh, seeing how he is getting through this. Oh no! Got hit by those saws. It's not quite the right timing. It's this. this That diagonal down at the beginning there is pixel perfect to get it through the gap that he's got. 
Um, and then here, where he should be throwing it down, I think, anyway, to, to land between the saws. But it's just such an impressive start to the round. It's so quick. You can see it now, side by side, how much faster Samurai is out of the gate. Almost had it. Yeah, indeed. Hopefully he finds that. Oh, and just keeps keeps getting hurt on those saws. Not quite finding how to get up to that area like Salad has. Yeah, we can see Salad doing a jump there and then the warp dagger up diagonal to get past that area where um, Samurai Man is really struggling in that one particular area. And I think that's probably where he can definitely save some time. Yeah, but Sal has just saved some time. All right, it's 0.1 of a second, but that's still 0.1 of a second faster than he was before. And when we're talking <laughs> about times this close, that is a huge difference. That is a really big improvement there from Salad. Samurai Man is going to be so upset when he next finishes the level, sees the leaderboard and sees that somehow Salad's got even faster. Hopefully it will be inspiring to him and trying to figure that out um, and see how he can do better. I'm sure he's probably scratching his head like, where do I get better? Where do I get more time? How do I save that um, half a second time or more than half a second now? But uh, just trying to work it out, get faster. Yeah. Salad's got it almost down as well because he followed that up with a 10.79 second run as well. So that's two really quick runs that he's got. It's just this beginning bit. I, if he just got that diagonal uh, knife throw correct so that he could warp down, I think we could be looking at a sub-10. Yeah, that would be amazing if he got the sub-10 there. I, I wonder if he's, if he's tried that diagonal or not, because that was actually the first thing that entered my mind when you have this kind of area, and you know you need to go down. Can you just jump up a little bit and then do the diagonal knife throw like Samurai Man is doing? Um, I wonder if he's tried that in the past. Do you remember seeing it? I, I didn't see him do it, but I do know from my own experience that that is a pixel-perfect throw. It's so difficult to, to land it correctly, because as you jump, you have to throw it down at the right point. So it doesn't hit the platform you stand on originally, but it doesn't right. hit... There's a small square in the bottom right you see on Samurai and now on Salad Screen. A small square where the lasers connect. And if it hits that, you can't warp through as well. You just warp into the lasers and die. So it is a uh, really yeah. tough throw to make. Um, you know, and Samurai's making it look easy, but uh, he's clearly just got the, the it down now. And there you saw he didn't get the input right and, and burned himself up. What happened? Both competitors still working on this level. It's interesting to see them trying, trying stuff, practicing, getting a little bit more bold each time. And a lot of times it ends in fiery death or spiky death or endless pit of doom death <laughs> but that's what you got to do to try to get those fastest times now salad going for a couple of diagonals there that was interesting Almost had it. yeah it's interesting to see samurai now throwing his knife around those swords as well so maybe maybe he's gonna get it i mean we've only got two and a half minutes left so we're talking about those final little tweaks of optimization here um so it'll be interesting even though samurai is now trying it if you'll be able to optimize it correctly Oh no, Samurai Mind just losing a little bit of time there with a failed dagger throw. That was unfortunate. Yeah, but he definitely seems to think that might be his ticket to the faster time. It would be great to see in this last two minutes if we start see seeing them overtake each other. If Salad's even going to finish the level again or if he's just going to keep resetting. Because if, say for example, Samurai does get it down to 10-7-7, will Salad even see that? Will he start, you know, worrying about it? Or does he even care, you know? I'm very competitive, I look at other people's times, but do they? Do they even care, or are they just racing themselves in their own heads? It's an interesting point. Uh, and one interesting thing I'm seeing from Salad here is that we talked about that diagonal through the fire, um, but Salad does a diagonal, almost exactly the same kind of thing, to get down the steps after the fire, even though he goes straight through the fire instead of diagonal, he does a diagonal throw to get down those steps. And if he could just connect that motion and uh, an idea just to get that through the fire, hopefully he would save a little bit more time. Yeah, you're absolutely right there, because he, he, you know, he's throwing it down, then throwing the, the knife through in that like small tunnel that he's got there. So if he could get that into like one nice frame, maybe he could knock a bit more time off. But this is the sort of stuff that we'll see as this game gets more 
more popular played more often you know we'll see people watch other people play it and go ah that was fast or they'll see things like this where you've got two side by side and they go okay so he's doing that fast and he's doing that fast and then suddenly they'll combine them and we'll get even faster times again yeah, I think that's where our competitors are at a slight disadvantage because even though they can see the times, they don't really see what the other runner is doing. Well, unless they have the stream up. I don't know if that's in the rules or not. <laughs> but um, it's something of like, they don't really know what the other person is doing. And obviously they haven't seen, Samurai hasn't seen, or uh, I should say Salad hasn't seen what Samurai is doing. So they don't go through that diagonal at the beginning with the fire bars. Um, and Samurai is not seeing the op optimizations that Salad is doing kind of in the later part of the level. Yeah, and with 10 seconds left on the clock, I don't think it's going to happen for Samurai, Oi. unfortunately. That last run there, he, uh, he connected his knife at the wrong wall and warped to the wrong place, and that's time. Uh, Salad uh, there taking the win with a 10.78 time. Really, really close, and really great to see Samurai continuously lower his time throughout. But Salad there, just knocking that extra 0.1 of a second off as well, was just insane. So, so fast. Right, and such great skill uh, displayed here. Congratulations to both runners, especially Salad, who is moving on to the next part of the tournament. This has been a really great run and really cool to watch these competitors uh, and also displaying the game, which is absolutely fabulous. Yeah, so that'll put him up into the top 16 which is uh, very, very close to going to the quarterfinals, semifinals, all that sort of fun stuff. Um, so there's actually some prizes for this as well that have been supplied by Elgato and Gunner. So there's a lot of uh, incentive for these runners to keep improving themselves. Uh, here you can see the brackets from the top 32 uh, into the top 16. We haven't got the top 64 on there at the moment, but the next game is a top 64 game. Um, and it will be a Red Ruby versus Ognilrak. Um, and that'll be... Oh. There we go. Um, as I was announcing that, it will not be Red Ruby versus Ognorak because unfortunately, the remaining matches today have been cancelled. So what will happen is, is we will take a wee break and we will step back um, on Tuesday night. Um, and that'll be at 1 o'clock Pacific time. You're going to have to correct me if I'm wrong here, Americans, but it'll be uh, 6 o'clock GMT. Um, <laughs> but I think it's 1 o'clock Pacific time um, for you guys as well on Tuesday. Oh, Eastern time. Eastern time. Brilliant. Well, that was a really good match, and I'm glad that we got to have one last match that was so close before we, we signed off for the evening. Um, this game will be out on the 30th of September. That's Thursday. Um, so get it wishlisted on Steam, it'll be on Switch, it'll be on uh, a couple of other consoles as well, so it's it'll be accessible to you no matter what. But it's going to be great, isn't it, Catherine? It is. I can't wait to see it, and we will see you back here on Tuesday. So that's all for now. Remember to wishlist it, and we will see you then.